Have you ever needed to reconstruct a final rendering using only Keyshot render passes? Well, as long as you stick to a few simple rules, it is possible and I'll show you. Now you might have heard about compositing while falling down the rabbit hole of extra nerdy forums or CGI related websites. It's most commonly used in the film industry when combining footage from multiple cameras or integrating special effects with a live action video. Now as both my comfort and skill level increase within Keyshot, I find myself browsing forums and books dedicated to film production and visual effects. We can all agree that the bar for CGI these days is set unbelievably high, and in many cases it's impossible to distinguish CGI from live action footage today. It makes me wonder what tools and workflows are being used within the film industry, and further, could my own product rendering work benefit from adopting some of these tools or workflows? So, what is compositing? Well, when you create a rendering, lots of different calculations take place within the computer. The software compiles these results of these calculations to serve you with a complete image. Render passes actually make available to you the results of each of these individual calculations as individual images. Now, the act of combining these render passes to create a final or an RGB pass, as Keyshot calls it, is what we call compositing. But who would actually do this? It sounds like a bunch more work to arrive at the same result, right? Well, let's say an art department asks you to deliver a layered image of a product that will be customized with variations. Maybe there are different colors or unique labels or artwork that will appear on each variation of that product. In this case, compositing would allow you to use perhaps just one final rendering to produce a handful of different images. Now, compositing is even more common in animation work. Rendering animations is incredibly expensive, especially when rendering 24 to 30 frames or images per second. Now, imagine needing to make a lighting change or a color change after your computer is nearly burst into flames as a result of rendering nonstop for two weeks straight. Render passes and compositing can save you from needing to re-render all those frames, ensuring that you meet the deadline on time. Okay, so now that we're familiar with compositing and render passes, how do we actually do this in Keyshot? Once you're ready to render, we need to stick to a few rules. Make sure you're in product mode or at least enable caustics and global illumination in the lighting tab for this to work. Next, we need to render out a linear 32-bit image. This can be done by rendering a 32-bit Photoshop document or EXR format. Now, after we do that, we need to render out all of our render passes. And if we wanna save disk space, you only need to render out the lighting, GI, reflection, refraction, and caustics passes. Since we'll be compositing these in Photoshop, choose PSD 32-bit. Finally, be sure not to miss this checkbox here. You need to tick Add to PSD if you want these render passes to be combined into one file, otherwise it's a mess. Now let's say you're rendering EXRs to composite your image in something other than Photoshop. Keyshot doesn't support multi-channel EXR yet, so you'll need to combine these manually in your compositing program. Now before we render, I should also mention a few limitations Keyshot has at the time of this recording. If you've got area lights in your scene and they are visible in reflections, those reflections won't be captured in your render passes. In the case of this scene, I had to light it entirely by HDRI to get around this. Next, if you're using materials other than the most common plastic, metal, solid glass, cloudy plastic, you may have issues with some of your render passes. Again, in this case, I had to convert some translucent materials in this scene to plastic in order to be able to get usable render passes. Finally, if you're rendering in GPU mode, I'm not sure what to expect. So far, I've had more consistent results in CPU mode. I also need to mention that any adjustments you've made in the Image Styles tab will only be applied to the RGB pass, not the individual render passes. So be sure to set all those back to the default settings if you want your render passes to composite correctly. Okay, so now we're ready to render. Go ahead and let her rip. Once your rendering completes, I'll see you in Photoshop.
If you're looking to take your Keyshot skills to the next level, then check out the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Inside, I share the exact process I've used and refined over the past 10 years to deliver renderings to some of today's most recognized brands, with over 15 hours of content broken into 100 plus bite-sized, beginner-friendly videos, this is the most comprehensive Keyshot course available. When you enroll, you will learn how to turn a boring CAD model into beautiful photoreal images. Stop wasting time searching for tutorials on YouTube and fast track your learning by enrolling in the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what other customers have to say about it. So here we are in Photoshop. You can see my document is in 32-bit mode. This is important as most blend modes are going to assume 32-bit depth and linear color space. Next, expand the Render Passes folder and turn off all the Render Passes except for these five. Lighting, GI, Caustics, Reflection, Refraction. To set the blend mode, just click this box here and choose Linear Dodge Add. This is just taking the brightness and color of each pixel on this layer and adding it on top of the image below in a linear fashion, which is exactly how light behaves in the real world. The bottom render pass, Lighting, we're just going to leave that set to normal. It shouldn't be interacting with any other layers below it. And that's it. Now, to see if your composite turned out correctly, just drag that RGB pass on top of the stack and toggle it on and off. Now, there may be some discrepancies depending on your exact materials and render mode. Unfortunately, there's tons of variables at play here, and this isn't a terribly conventional workflow for Keyshot users. Now, if you want to make some adjustments to the individual layers, you may need to convert to 16-bit format. This may give you some odd results if you're not careful, though, and the reasons why I get a little too technical for this tutorial, but you can adjust the strength of each render layer using masks and opacity as needed before merging them down. Now, once in 16-bit mode, you should be able to do any editing that you're used to doing in Photoshop. Other compositing tools operate natively in 32-bit mode and may offer you a little more flexibility in editing a 32-bit document. Now, to keep the document as editable as possible, just keep it in 32-bit or 16-bit mode and to save out an image that takes out less disk space, you can always export as a JPEG. So finally, after all this, is it worth it? I think it can be depending on the specific needs. For most people though, I think the answer is no. With myriad material and light incompatibilities I've run across in Keyshot, I don't think it's a workflow I'd recommend unless it solves a big problem for you. However, I wanted to make this tutorial since it's been requested so many times. All that said, learning is cool. And if you followed this tutorial and you learned something, then give yourself credit. And until next time, happy rendering.